Good morning, everyone. It is so good to see you and worship with you on this sunny Sunday, which is beautiful. It's so welcome to those who worship with us online. I'm so glad you are here with us. Um, today, we have a lot of announcement from, you can find the announcement from page 9 through 14 uh, to learn what's going on in our life of the church and to be involved more actively uh, into the life of the church. And the first thing I would like to lift up is a Vision of Hope Capital Campaign. This is launching today until April 30th. And this campaign will help us to support the regrowing of our ministries with necessary updates with, of technologies and hospitality spaces for us, to, be, for us to, to continue to be a church in this hurting world and to do something about it. And I want to say thank you to Mary Louise Lavery, our lay leader, and also the chairperson of this capital campaign. She's going to give us a brief information about this campaign later of the, this service. And also more information is available in the Welcome Center on the table. As Easter is approaching quickly, we want to share Easter and Holy Week service schedule on page 15 in the bulletin. And for those who are joining us online, you can find every announcement and the sermon notes and resources on our now page, headonfieldemc.org slash now. And you will be able to see Monday, Thursday service offering at 7 o'clock. It's going to be our uh, fellowship hall. And Good Friday service, will, we will host Good Friday 7 last word service at noon to 3 o'clock. It's a community event, community service with music and homilies with various preachers from our community. And on Easter Sunday, uh, the service will be offered at 6, 8, 9, and 10.30 in the morning. And on, the, on Saturday, the Easter vigil service is also offered at 5 o'clock in Brown Chapel. A day before Easter, we'd like to host an Easter egg hunt and spring fair for families with young children. It's going to be on April 8th at 10 o'clock in the North Lawn, and we, we want to share the joy of Easter with the children. This is a rain or shine event to reach out to the community, and we need your help to make it happen. Candy donations and volunteers are needed, and Amazon wish list is available for candy donation on the website or in the bulletin. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact to the church office with your questions. And I want to ask your help to decorate our worship space with Easter flowers by ordering Easter flowers in memory of or in honor of your loved ones. You can pick up Easter flowers after 10.30 Easter service here or you can donate them to de be delivered to the homebound people to share Easter joy with them. Also, if you are interested in and willing to deliver Easter flowers, please uh, sign it up. You can find uh, the QR code for sign up of the Easter flower delivery. And I have... Uh, the, I want to announce and I want to invite and encourage your help for our youth ministry, student ministries. Our students will host pasta dinner on April 29th at 6 o'clock. This is the biggest fundraising event to support the student ministry's mission. And dinner is kids-friendly and tickets are available uh, to, to be purchased in the Welcome Center after the church. Or you can find uh, the online QR code to buy the ticket online as well. And as a part of fundraising effort, silent auction baskets are needed. And your donation, any of your donation is greatly appreciated for this silent auction basket. So please find more information in our bulletin. I know uh, for some of you, it's really uh, new, to, new uh, information. So I encourage you to check out uh, our bulletin for, to find more information. Last but not least, 
we want to offer new membership class today from 1 to 3 in Sayer Pavilion. For those who want to continue your journey as a member of our community or for those who are interested in to learn more about our community. And new members will be received next Sunday on Palm Sunday on April 2nd in the service of their choice. Oh, speaking of Palm Sunday, uh, we are going to have a donkey pr procession uh, next Sunday on our Palm Sunday as a long tradition and beautiful tradition of our church. And we are going to have a donkey in the beginning of the service. But before, you can meet donkey outside in North Lawn to take a picture and pet them or feed them as well. You are welcome to join. So, if you are ready, so let us center our hearts by taking a deep breath. And I invite you to stand for, to join our responsible call to worship. The words can be found on page four in the bulletin. We are brought here today to glimpse Christ's hope for us. We are brought here today to be healed of our fears. We are a letter of Christ written with the spirit of the living God. Amen. Let us sing together hymn number 332, Spirit of Faith, Calm Down.
Good morning. My name's Ed Hahn. 40 or 50 or 100 years ago, my wife and I served this church. Um, some of you even may remember that. And one of the honors that I had fairly weekly was to lead the prayer of the people or the pastoral prayer or the intercessory prayer. But in those days, we used prayer cards. And so before the prayer time, the ushers would move among, and people would make notes on little cards and would bring them to me, and during the prayer, I would read them. Never knew what was coming, didn't know all the names, but God did. And so we shared that. Well, they've asked me to pray again this week. And so we don't have prayer cards, but I'm going to take time to name some folks some of you, some others, and at the end of that, give space, as I did then, just to be silent so that each of us will have time to pray ourselves. This is not my prayer. It's our prayer with our God. To that end, let us pray. Good morning, God. It's me, Ed. We've talked earlier today, but now I have the chance to speak with you and with these, your servants, that we might become your spirit letters for the whole world. So make space for us now, for each of us and all of us together, Lord. Make space that we might be your letters for the world. Make space for Jisun, that by her words and her presence, she might speak your words to us, and we might be lifted. Make space for Mark, for Matt, as through his fingers and his Feet and his presence, he might bring music that lifts us to you. Make space for this choir, for Angel and his solo, and for each who sing here, that we might hear your voice and be loved. Speak to us, Lord, through Mary Louise and Jackie for the ushers and the greeters and the others who serve us in this congregation and this worship service, that each might be a part of your letter to us. Speak to those who are not in this room, but are virtually coming to you, that they also might hear, might notice, may see you present with them in their bedrooms, in their living rooms in their kitchens and be with each one in this room. The ones who came together and see each other week after week, the one who is here for the first time, give space to that one, Lord, that they might know they are not alone but are with you. Give space to the one who doesn't even know why he or she is here but they've come from some movement of your spirit. They know who you are. You know who they are. And for those beyond this place, we pray for Pastor Chris, that as he travels back to us this coming week, it may be with safety and with renewed commitment to you, speak to him, give him space that he might give to us your word as he has grown. We pray for his family as they go through their health concerns. Oh, Lord, there's a whole prayer list in these, this bulletin. So many names, Lord, of people for whom we are praying. We don't know them all, but you do. So touch each of them, including and especially Nancy, who for the first time is in that list. We pray for visitors to this place and this time, for those who are in grief and in sorrow, who are traveling, 
who are broken, some of us here, some of us beyond. May there be space made for you to heal our brokenness. We pray for the leaders of this nation, of this state, of our communities, of the tribes and clans and gangs, for children, for those being bombed right now, oh God, make space for them to see your hope. We pray in this holy season of Lent for those who are suffering and sorrowing and confessing in ways that they're not even sure they believe they can be forgiven. Make space for them in your healing, holy presence, that they might true, truly be your servants, your children, your letters of love. We pray for those who may no one else might speak for in this moment right now of silence. Hear each of us speak our prayers that you might claim our words, our hearts, and be love for them. In this holy time of Lent, Lord Jesus Christ, make us your letters of love for you, for those whom we know and do not, that we might re you might reach through us. Bring us now together as we share in that prayer you taught, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Hymn number 132 in our bulletins. We are called to stand or to be seated and to share together as love letters for God.
Good morning. Today's scripture reading is from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, verse 3, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Surely we do not need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you, do we? You yourselves are our letter, written on our hearts, to be known and read by all. And you show that you are a letter of Christ, prepared by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God, not that we are competent of ourselves to claim anything as coming from us. Our competence is from God, who has made us competent to be ministers of a new covenant, not of letter, but of spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Jackie. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I want to call your attention on our sermon note available on page 8 in your bulletin as you listen to the message today. How do you keep in touch with each other? We all might have multiple ways of communication, and our communication method would vary depending on the people, time, place, or occasion we interact with. We might have someone primarily we communicate with via email. We might have someone else we mostly talk on the phone or by text. Or you might have someone who is only connected with you through social media and update each other's life, what's going on through social media. In my case, I usually make video calls with my parents in South Korea, but somehow my sisters and I talk more on voice calls. Not that I don't want to see their face on video, but mostly, we are not ready to be shown on video when we talk to each other. How about cards? Cards are another co common way of communication, especially to deliver our greetings, our sympathy, care, gratitude, and celebration by each season. During the first one or two years since I moved to the States, Receiving cards via mail was so new to me, especially during the holiday seasons, because I do not remember if I ever mailed Christmas cards or Easter cards to my family or friends in South Korea. So I was surprised by the number of cards people exchanged with each other every single season and every single year. I understand better now how physical card could deliver care and joy in meaningful ways from my experience. And I like sending handwritten cards today to express my care while keeping healthy boundaries. And I like it because it does not require real-time interaction. When the new technology comes out, we always are concerned if the old ones will go. Of course, some old technologies have almost disappeared, like typewriter. Since the computers have been widely available and used in our daily lives, however, handwritten letters still exist in meaningful ways as they convey emotional resonance that digital technology cannot replace. Recommendation letters are another example. They are still expected and required to be delivered via enclosed mail to ensure authenticity for the well-rounded evaluation of candidates in the application process at many schools or workplaces. In the first century, letters were the primary and important means of communication as no other technology was available 
when the Apostle Paul was called for his mission to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ outside of Judea. He traveled from city to city in Asia, Macedonia, and Europe and founded early churches in various cities. The church in Corinth was one of the churches that Paul founded with his friends around AD 50 to 51 during his second missionary journey. He stayed there for 18 months to teach them about Jesus and his resurrection. And then he continued his missionary journey from city to city in different areas. In his journey, Paul did not forget about the churches he founded. In, in his many letters, he mentioned he continued to pray for them, and he was able to visit some of the churches again and was able to write the letters to empower and encourage them. Out of 27 books of the New Testament, 13 epistle letters are attributed to Paul for this reason. And today's reading is a part of Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. When Paul heard their struggles for the first time, he hurried to visit them. However, this visit turned out to be a painful experience as some people questioned about Paul's authority and credibility. But when the elders of the Corinthian churches sent a letter to Paul with questions about the issues they were struggling with, Paul wrote his first letter to address the issues of false teachers and immoral behavior in what was happening in the church of Corinth. It was well received by the church, more than he expected. And later, Paul received another bad report about the Corinthian church, and he chose to write another letter because he didn't want to make another painful visit in person but he cared for people there. So today's reading begins with Paul's rejection of the notion that he needed to provide a recommendation letter or receive such a letter from them. In Greco-Roman uh, culture, recommendation letters were commonly used as a means of introducing or commending someone to the new place. But they already knew Paul, and Paul already knew people there. So as Paul founded a church and shared his life with them in teaching and eating, left, left, lefters and crying for 18 months, Paul helped them to shape, to be shaped who they were in Christ. So here, Paul was defending himself from those who re rejected his authority and credibility of his teaching because it meant they were rejecting Jesus who sent him to the community. So Paul redefined the notion of a recommendation letter by using a beautiful metaphor of life as a letter. Regardless of Paul's painful history of the Corinthians church, Paul proudly says they are his letter written in his heart and prepared by Paul and his friends who planted the seed of good news of the Jesus Christ in their community. And the source of his confidence and competence is not himself, but God who made him to be a minister of a new covenant. Here, a new covenant alludes to the Old Testament. His description of a tablet of stone employs the same term, used to describe the stone tablets given by God to Moses on Mount Sinai. While Moses was on the Mount Sinai for 40 days to receive God's law, people of Israel, Israel was, were not so patient. They couldn't wait for him to come down. They made and worshipped the golden calf, which was often cited as an example of disobedience to God by many Jewish authors. However, God gave a vision of a new covenant to prophets, especially to Jeremiah and Ezekiel. They envisioned God's people to obey by writing a new covenant on their hearts with a new spirit. Paul brought this context and background to his advantage to make a point. Jesus was not a stranger to you, 
but he fulfilled the prophet of the, the Old Testament through his life, death, and resurrection. And I love this beautiful metaphor, life as a letter. We are a letter of Christ to the world written with the spirit of the living God. Isn't it beautiful? What's the element of a letter? A letter has its writer, recipient, content, and medium, and deliverer. And the message of this letter is not about myself and yourself, but Christ who forgives, comforts, and loves us. It is written not on the paper with ink, but on the heart with the spirit of the living God. It's not set in stone. It's an old story, but the story keeps written, keep, it, it, story, it, it keeps renewed in our heart, in our own stories, in each other's lives. And recipients are the people around us and the world, and we are the deliverers of this letter to others. That means you are a letter of Christ in my heart. And I am a letter of Christ in your heart. We are a letter of Christ to each other and to the world, delivering the good news for all, a new covenant of forgiveness, unconditional love and grace pouring out on all of God's children. As a, as a minister of a new covenant, Paul is to prepare people for obedience to God. Obedience to God is our willingness to submit our will, ourselves, to the God's will for us. And I feel like freedom and obedience do not sound like a good match, right? But ironically, freedom is found in our joyful obedience to God. As Paul says in verse 17, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where Jesus is, there is freedom. Where the spirit of the living God is, there is freedom. I don't know about you, but I like monthly installment, especially when I need to buy something big if there is no interest. However, Jesus did not set up monthly installment for us to pay for our own sins. Christ paid the full, the bill claimed and reclaimed them as his own to bring us back into the fellowship with our creator, our savior and sustainer. And the spirit of God is with us in our darkest or brightest moment, in our questions or doubt and unbelief, who are full of confidence and competence and wherever there is spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. And we feel like what freedom looks like, feels like, and sounds like, and tastes like in the presence of God. As we have been journeying together in this Lenten season with our sermon series, Making Space, we have been trying hard to declutter our physical spaces or in emotional and spiritual spaces. We are trying to make a simple space to experience God's presence in prayer, in meditation, in nature, or in solitude. And we are also reminded that this is not another task, but our way of life. And today, we are here to learn from the Apostle Paul you and I are a letter of Christ. What does it mean? We know no one can represent all the Christians. However, many people learn and experience about Jesus through the Christians around them. Have you ever heard and have you ever experienced an awkward silence in your friend circle or family circle as soon as you mention about Jesus' name? or as soon as you talk about Jesus. And these days, I often experience an awkward silence as soon as I let them know I'm a pastor. So many people don't, don't know how to respond. <laughs> and, so, and also, I'm very good at making awkward silence, and it's not foreign to me. 
but I, th I think we should be mindful and aware about this because we might represent Christ to someone around us through our presence, words, and action, and attitude of life. Probably we are the only one representative of Christ to someone. Even though we do not talk about Jesus, Christians are known to be loving, gracious, and kind, and generous, and faithful as Jesus is. And how can we share our journey with others, especially those who haven't heard about Jesus yet, or those who are on the fringe of the relationships with God for many reasons? I want to share some tips for us to remember in sharing our journey with others. First, let people open a letter of Christ by themselves. Some letters stay enclosed for a while if a receiver do not open. If we are a letter of Christ, we, the opening the letter is not our job. As faith cannot be forced to, to believe, our part might be to continue to write and deliver this letter of love letter for God to their mailbox. It's not the work of mine or yours but the work of the Spirit, whom we trust. And to be honest, I don't check my mailbox every day. Once in a week or twice a week for the best cases, but eventually I check my mail delivered into my mailbox. Number two, share your journey vocally when necessary. Spoken words are not the only form of communication, and it's not the only way to share our journey. Sometimes our action speaks louder than words, and sometimes your non-anxious presence speaks louder than any word to those who need just someone to sit with you. The means of kindness, cards, flowers, food can deliver your deep love and care to someone. And they might catch a glimpse of what God's love looks like, feels like, and sounds like through our actions. And let us always be faithful and sincere and share our journey vocally when necessary. But when we do it, let us share our own story in confidence and humility. So let our story point to God always. Number three is make yourself accountable. Find a safe space to nurture your relationships with God and with others. If we walk alone, we can go faster. But if we walk together, we can go further. Life is a roller coaster, but we don't need to ride it alone. We need each other on this journey. And let us find a small group of people or our prayer partners to make ourselves accountable. And trust me, it works for us. And it works for me because, you know, like, you know, contemplative prayer on Wednesday makes me accountable to show up in prayer space and time. And my small group, like Tuesday morning, Alexio Divina in the morning at 8 o'clock on Tuesday, that makes me accountable to show up and to receive God's word and to share uh, the inspirations with each other. Make yourself accountable and uh, walk with others. And in listening of others in the conversation, be a good listener. Nobody needs someone to talk to us about what to do in our lives, but we need someone to walk with us holding our hands. So let us be the person to the person next to us and in your close circle. I know how your daily life goes fast with many things to do and many responsibilities you carry on. However, I also know it is possible to make space with God in our daily lives because God is always already present and works in and among us. So maybe it's a time for you to open and read a letter of Christ delivered to you by someone. 
baby, it's a, your turn to deliver a letter of Christ, a letter of love to someone, one way or the other. Let us be intentional about making space to share our journey with each other so that others can see and taste God's goodness and faithfulness through our actions and words and presence. And I pray we experience what freedom feels like and looks like and sounds like this day and the days to come as we continue our journey together. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Ji Sung. Pastor Chris has asked me to uh, address you today and kind of bring you up to speed on our capital uh, campaign, the vision of hope. So one of the things Pastor Chris has said to us is that we are perfectly positioned to be the church in a hurting world in this century. So let's take a quick glance around. What do we have here? We obviously have a beautiful facility. We have three separate worship spaces. Look at the people in the pews around you. These people are volunteers, workers, helpers that keep our programs running. And to me, one of the most amazing things that we have, that this church learned how to do on a dime was becoming digital, digitally aware of how to produce film that could go out and connect people during the pandemic. And in fact, we were so successful that if you add up the number of people here, add up the number of people who are watching online, you get a greater number than we had before the pandemic. So those are the good things that we have going on. Our mission, of course, is to make disciples for Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Now, the world sounds like a kind of big title, but our world, our little world, what can we do? What difference can we make? And the purpose of this campaign to raise quite a bit of money is to support staffing, we don't want to lose anybody, programming, facilities, and continue to make disciples for generations to come. Now, when I was mentioning all the things we have, I left out the staff. We have an amazing staff, 12 people that work tirelessly to keep this place going. So I think in many ways we, we really are blessed. But we also have to remember that we too have been gifted. We have been gifted by the generations that came before us. Uh, and now it's time for us to think about our legacy and how well will we position the church for the next generation. So, some of you may not be aware of this, but we have a fund here in the church called the Living Ministry Endowment Fund. Now, those of you who have been here long like I have, you will remember a, a most kind and generous and humble man by the name of Dan Cheney. Dan, when he lived, gave us a lot of money, and when he died, he gave us more. And he started this living ministry endowment. Now, what's the purpose? Okay, well, some years you may have a shortfall, shall we say, between the amount pledged and the amount actually given. So what do we do? With the living ministry endowment, we use a percentage of that each year to help us with just our operational budget. 
And you may say, well, aren't there other endowments? Well, yes, there are, and particularly one for the beautiful organ back here. But th those are for specific things, and we need something for operations. So I'm going to be honest with you. This is a big task. It's going to be a $1.25 million ask over a three-year period. This is going to call for sacrificial giving. We're not all asked to give the same amount because we don't have the same checkbook. But you and God can get together and pray about what your part of this program uh, would be. Now, if we raise this much money and put it in that living ministry endowment, that money will earn us about $100,000 a year. That's a big help, and we would love to have that. Now, the additional $250,000 that is uh, asked for is because, um, remember when we built the new part here, the new building, Fellowship Hall was never meant as a worship space. That was just like a place for the kids to play games and run around and so forth. And it was Pastor Brian Greco who said, wait a minute, let's put our contemporary service down there. So that's where we were when the pandemic started. But how many of you have watched the nine o'clock service and looked like, wow, it's kind of dark down there? Yes, it is, because the lighting is not appropriate for the filming that we're doing. And have you ever looked at all the equipment that's down there? It looks like a television studio. Guess what? Our budget didn't buy any of that. that those items were, um, we got through grant writing that Pastor Chris and Pastor Ji Sung did for us. And the other pieces actually belong to Pastor Chris. And they're getting old, and these things need replacing. So part of the money, this 250000 part of that, will go to refurbish Fellowship Hall for the way it's being used. Now, the last part is Propert Hall. Uh, the Propert Cafe is now our uh, really hot spot for hospitality. We have meetings there. We have breakfast there. And frankly, folks, the carpet's getting dirty. It's not easy to clean. <laughs> we need to change that uh, so that it is uh, uh, more to the purpose for which it's being used. And then the final thing that's just maybe a little thing, but it's also a big thing. And that is that we formed a, a new group called the Haddonfield United Methodist Church Legacy Society. So what's that? Well, that's asking each of us to make a commitment in our will to leave a gift to the church when we pass on. And as Jim Edwards, who is helping coordinate this, says there's no gift too small or too large, but we would like to see a legacy society started here. Now, over the next few weeks, you're going to hear from other church members and hear their reasons for why they are supporting this and encouraging you to do, do this also. Now, I know that you are a generous church, so I'm thanking you ahead of time for your gifts in the future. Okay, now it is time for our offering, so uh, I think you know all the ways on page nine, there's texting, online, scanning, or good old-fashioned checks and envelopes. So pick your way, uh, and we thank you. Will our ushers please come forth?
the blessings that you have bestowed on us. Help us to be faithful in our stewardship, ever listening to that still, quiet voice from you that urges us onward and closer to your kingdom. We ask in thy name. Amen. Now would you join us, page 156, I Love to Tell the Story.
experience God's love, God's presence through you, through your kindness, prayers, generosity, and patience, and perseverance. Let us tell this story of love to people around us through our lives. You are a letter of Christ to people around you and to the world. But before we go, I want to invite you to turn to your neighbor and say, you are a letter of Christ for me. You are a letter of Christ for me. Yeah, I know it's, sometimes it feels a little awkward, but it's affirmation that who we are as we continue our journey together. Let us go and stay in this love of God and grace of Jesus Christ and the peace of the Holy Spirit and be the church in this hurting world. Amen.